there's a million challenges of starting a business. Where do you want me to start? Um, uh, but the important things for uh, people to think about are, first of all, you know, is there a compelling idea with a big enough market? Uh, are there customers ready to buy your product or service? And you have some kind of differentiation, something that will make your product stand out or something that will protect you from competitors who see that you've done a good thing and, and uh, want to come along and steal your business. The very first step, I would say, is to get a customer. Nothing's, nothing happens until you get a customer. So um, once you've got a sale, then you can worry about scrambling to to uh, deliver on that sale, but uh, the first thing, uh, that, let me back up, that's not exactly the first thing you would do. There's a little bit of preparatory work, but very quick, very quickly, uh, to really test your idea, you have to go out and see if somebody actually wants your product or service. I think there's opportunity everywhere. Um, a good friend of mine says uh, entrepreneurship is like Scrabble. Uh, when you play Scrabble, uh, when you put a letter on the end of a word, you don't get credit just for that letter, you get credit for the whole world, uh, for the whole word. And entrepreneurship is like that as well. So uh, rather than looking externally in terms of like the sort of newest, hottest sector, uh, which you can do, but uh, everyone else is looking and identifying those same, op same opportunities, I think it's much better to uh, look internally at what your interests are and where your passion lies. Uh, because if you connect your own passion uh, with some kind of um, business development, then uh, then you're there for the for the tough times, and you're really you're doing something that you enjoy. Well, uh, in the last certainly, I'll we'll talk about sort of larger trends. In the last 20 years, uh, Americans have learned that there is no such thing as job security. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you'll you may be broke, but you'll never be out of a job. Uh, and uh, people have started to take a much uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, considered look at what the pluses and minuses are of, of vesting yourself in a company that, that may not uh, have that same kind of loyalty to you. So um, uh, over, the, over the last 20 years, people have realized that, uh, that they can take control of their future by uh, building a business that they own themselves. Well, um, uh, the businesses are often as idiosyncratic as the entrepreneurs, but there are some fundamental things. So uh, the first thing, and this ties back to saying what, what's the first thing you do is you find a customer. So uh, there's got to be sort of a demand, and the demand has to be large enough, and the customers have to be identifiable uh, so that you can get to them in a cost-efficient way. And they also have to be open to your message. So. Uh, that's the first place. Um, the second thing is that uh, uh, just recognizing the demand isn't enough. You really have to have a product that delivers value and you're able to produce that product or service at a price that allows you good margins. And uh, you don't want to be building a business where you can at best hope to get a 10 or 15% margin. Uh, it's expensive uh, and time consuming to, to start a business and you need to be selling products where you get good margins. And then thirdly, um, uh, and sometimes this is a conscious effort to, to seek out an opportunity that has these characteristics and in other ways people luck into it, uh, but for a business to be sustainable over the long term, it's got to have some source of competitive advantage or competitive insulation so that someone comes along, they can't just take it away from you. And one of the best ways to get that uh, competitive insulation is to have um, a business model where once you get a customer, you keep a customer. It's very, very expensive to, to take on a new customer. The customers are wary, they're hard to find, they're difficult to convince to try your product or service. Once you get a customer, if you have a business model where you can keep that customer for the long term, then every year you spend 10% of your time keeping the old customers happy and you can spend 90% of your time finding new customers. So if I was to say, you know, apart from all the obvious things like, you know, satisfying a real need, finding a growing market and so on and so forth, uh, if I was to say there's one sort of simple um, characteristic of successful small businesses that have longevity, it's that they have a loyal customer base and they've built a business model where they get a customer and they keep a customer. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,